हेलो एवरीवन माई सेल्फ हितेश मौर्य वेलकम्स यू टू द आई एफ एस केमिस्ट्री प्लेटफॉर्म आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अ टॉपिक ऑफ रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म व्हिच इज एलिमिनेशन रिएक्शन एंड पर्टिकुलरली इन एलिमिनेशन रिएक्शन वी विल बी सीइंग सीरियो केमिस्ट्री ऑफ ई वन एंड ई टू रिएक्शन वेरी ऑफन वी गेट कन्फ्यूज वाई ई टू रिएक्शन लीड टू अटीरियो स्पेसिफिक प्रोडक्ट वेर एज even reaction leads to the product containing both the isomers correct to understand this let's understand via an example we are going to see stereo chemistry of even and e2 reaction correct to understand this in a better way let's take a example if we have a molecule as in the fischer projection and the reactants given were alcoholic koh and the second reactant which was given was etoh in the presence of heat first of all how we are going to identify which reaction is going to take place looking at the reagent alcoholic koh we know that actual nucleophile present here is c2h5o minus and c2h5o minus due to its bulkiness and strength it's behave as a base and it is a strong base that's why it will be performing e2 elimination so we have identified this path is going via e2 elimination whereas etoh is a neutral base it means it will be going via e1 pathway correct so first of all let's see how e1 reaction leads to the both the isomeric form correct when we study e1 reaction we see that e1 reaction proceeds via a carbocationic intermediate it means this is our living group this will be leaving and we will be generating a carbocationic intermediate the carbocation developed would be in the fischer form only will be a carbocation at this center ch3 hydrogen and the phenyl group correct now once we have developed the carbocation we will be looking for the beta hydrogens to be extracted by the base the beta hydrogen present for there for this system is this is your beta carbon attached to it is the beta hydrogen no other beta hydrogen is present for the this carbocationic center if we so if we see this center this will be an alpha center whereas a center attached here will also be an alpha center this beta carbon has only one beta hydrogen attached correct now there will be two possibilities of the product when the base comes it will abstract the proton and this sigma electron density moves here and we generate a alkene like transition state and the final product is our alkene there is possibility of both the isomeric form of alkene let's suppose first we form z form of z isomer form of the alkene this is your z isomer this single bond can go under rotation this carbocationic intermediate single bond can undergo into rotation when the rotation take place the second isomeric form of the alkene will be formed this time ch3 was here ph here but due to bond rotation CS3 has came anti to the CS3 and the isomeric form developed here is E isomer. That is the reason always E E1 elimination leads to the both the alkene isomeric form, whereas E2 elimination leads to only one isomeric form. Let's see how. In order to deal with E2 elimination, we need to convert this Fischer form into wedge dash form. let's see the conversion first if we have we have our reactant as 
सी एस थ्री लिविंग ग्रुप हाइड्रोजन सी एस थ्री एंड फिनाइल इन ऑर्डर टू हैव द ई टू एलिमिनेशन वी नीड वी आर द लिविंग ग्रुप एंड द हाइड्रोजन बोथ एंटी टू ईच अदर इट मीन्स दिस ब्रोमीन हेयर एंड हाइड्रोजन शुड बी एंटी टू ईच अदर सो टू मेक अवर कॉन्सेप्ट ईजी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू वी विल कन्वर्ट दिस फिशर फॉर्म इन टू वेज डैश फॉर्म एंड हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डू दैट द फर्स्ट स्टेप विल बी रोटेट दिस मॉलिक्यूल रोटेट दिस फिशर फॉर्म एंड कन्वर्ट इट इन टू अ हॉरिजोंटल फॉर्म इफ वी रोटेट दिस फिशर फ्रॉम इन दिस डायरेक्शन वी आर गोइंग टू हैव फीनाइल फीनाइल बोथ द सी एस थ्रीज विल बी लाइंग हेयर एंड बी आर विल कम हेयर अलॉन्ग विद द हाइड्रोजन वंस वी हैव कन्वर्टेड इन टू दिस फॉर्म जस्ट होल्ड द फीनाइल्स लेट्स इमेजिन दिस ब्लैक पेन इज योर फीनाइल सेंटर you are holding this phenyl and in the second hand you are holding the phenyl just rotate the phenyl in this way it means when we do the rotation when we will do the rotation the phenyls have come in the same direction correct now the groups which are pointing in this direction are assumed to be above the plane it means i can attach hydrogen and bromine as above the plane or i can say towards me whereas these ch3s which are towards you in your direction can be represented below the plane these are present below the plane in order to achieve a e2 reaction we want bromine and this ch bond to be anti to each other so what we can do we can rotate this bond and bring this br opposite to the phenyl so we need to rotate this br into this direction correct so automatically the phenyl will be coming above the plane and ch3 will be remaining below the plane focus on this carbon center correct this was your phenyl group bromine is coming towards me and the methyl is going towards you now i am rotating holding this bromine and rotating in like this way the phenyl has come towards me it means it has now come above the plane and below the plane remains your ps3 group correct similarly focus on this yellow center we want this hydrogen to be in the place of phenyl it means we need to rotate it into this direction automatically the ps3 is going to come towards me means above the plane and phenyl is going to go below the plane so i can represent so i can represent this time cs3 as above the plane and below the plane has gone your phenyl group once you have achieved this you have to do anti elimination this sigma electron density comes here and the bromine is eliminated so you will finally generating a alkene which is which is phenyl is above the plane means towards me and 3s3 it's towards you whereas at this center we have phenyl towards you and cs3 towards me it means we have generated e alkene now if we assume this form this molecule as p and we take the second or the same diastereomeric form of the p what we are going to get let's see we started with cs3 cs3 bromine hydrogen phenyl and phenyl this was our p molecule if we take the diastereomeric form of the p we will be getting cs3 hydrogen and the br has come this side and cs3 here let's suppose this was our q molecule can you tell me the relation between p and q these p and q are diastereomeric in relation how the bottom part of the molecule remains the same correct so the configuration of this blue center will also remain same now we are talking about this 
pink center or I can say the red center. The configuration, if I assume that it was R, then it must be S. So this type of relation where one configuration remains same and the second configuration changes is a diastereomeric relation. It means P and Q both are P and Q both are diastereomers. Both are diastereomers. So when E2 elimination proceeds from the diastereomeric form of P, that is Q, then let's see what is the product. Again, we have alcoholic QOH and the reaction will be E2. In order to do E2 reaction, we will be following same steps. First, we will be converting it into horizontal form. Now again, pH has come here. In the horizontal form, bromine, CS3, CS3 and hydrogen. Once we have converted this into, we have to rotate this phenyls this way. We have to rotate this phenyls this way. It means we have converted into phenyl, phenyl. The substituents in this direction will be going above the plane. Means towards me, CS3, let me use a different color. The substituents will be going towards me, that is CS3. Whereas below the plane goes your bromine. Similarly, the hydrogen will be above the plane and the CS3 will be going below the plane. Now, in order to achieve E2 reaction, what we have to do? In order to achieve E2 reaction, we want our bromine and the CH to be anti to each other, correct? So, focus on this red carbon. When I want bromine somewhere opposite to the phenyl, I need to rotate this bromine in this direction. It means automatically phenyl is going now below the plane and CS3 remains above the plane. So, I can say from this center, we have phenyl below the plane and above the plane is your CS3. Correct? Now, I want this hydrogen atom in the place of phenyl. So, I would be rotating this hydrogen in, I would be rotating this hydrogen in this direction. So, automatically CS3 has came here and the phenyl has gone below the plane. Imagine hydrogen is lying towards me and the phenyl was lying somewhere here. See, this was your phenyl and hydrogen was towards me. I hold this hydrogen and rotated the molecule this way. So, automatically phenyl has gone towards you or I can say we have below the plane phenyl and above the plane CS3. Now, we have to just perform E2 elimination. This sigma electron density comes here and the bromine is eliminated, leaving us to an alkene which is phenyl and phenyl both same side and CS3, CS3 both side means we have got an alkene which is Z in nature. So now, focus on the two diastereomeric form results. When we choose P diastereomer, when we choose P diastereomer, we have formed a E alkene, whereas the second diastereomeric form of P result the alkene which has Z isomer. It means in short I can say P result as to E isomer, whereas the diastereomeric form of P which was Q results as Z isomer. This is the reason E2 reaction is termed as stereospecific in nature. This is termed as stereospecific reaction. That is why we call E2 reaction as stereospecific. I hope you got the concept of E2 reaction, how you have to reach to the final product and how you are going to tell whether the reaction is stereospecific or not. And in the case of E1, we have obtained both the products E and Z via the single diastereomeric form whereas in the case of E2, two, the diastereomeric form results the 
individually single product that's why we call them that that's why we call the e2 reaction as stereo specific reaction thank you i hope you got the concept of stereo chemistry of e1 and e2 reaction happy learning